for the second time ever. Our tour group is heading across the pond to France to explore its beautiful Paris Zoological Park. Our first adventure scaled the hills, forests, and waters of South America's Patagonia. Today we are walking through the rain and dry forests of Madagascar, indoors, outdoors, over 30 prominent species, some this channel has never featured before, and others that we may never feature again. Before we jump into things, I have to give a huge thank you to my friend Mark, who went to Paris and filmed the zoo and made these international features possible. And if you haven't already, we recommend pressing the subscribe button to officially join this zoo crew. And then I want all of you to tell me what European zoo exhibit is most deserving of a zoo tours feature. Our journey begins in an 80 foot tall, 350 foot long greenhouse, which is mostly dedicated to one of the world's most phenomenal species lists that represents the tropics of Guyana. When you get to the tail end of the greenhouse, South America becomes Madagascar. And what better way to kick things off than with the island's most famous kind of animal, lemurs. And this area has a lot of them, so it'll be really cool to see their differences. This is a black lemur, not to be confused with the blue-eyed black lemur. To say what everyone is thinking, lemurs come in all shapes, sizes, and for some males and females, they can be different colors. The girls have chestnut brown fur and white tufts, while the males have all black fur. When you think of Madagascar, of course you think lemurs, lions, zebras, hippos, and maybe penguins. But did you know Madagascar has around 40 bat species, most of which aren't found anywhere else on Earth? This is the straw-colored fruit bat. They're spread throughout most of mainland Africa, a tiny bit of the Arabian Peninsula, and I found a bunch of sources that don't even mention Madagascar as part of their range, but a few will say they can be found on the southern part of the island. Moral of this mini rant, Madagascar has bats. In an equally lush habitat, you'll never hear me say this ever again, is one of the most metal animals out there. The greater bamboo lemur is about a foot and a half at most. But not only do they almost exclusively eat one of the hardest plants to chew, the bamboo of their choosing is filled with cyanide. The daily dosage of this bamboo is about 20% of their body weight, which contains enough cyanide to kill a person. However, the bamboo lemur has evolved to neutralize these toxins in their diet. One thing Madagascar exhibits lack is the small stuff. The island has nearly 400 reptile species and around 275 amphibians. Paris's Madagascar has open top displays for radiated tortoises and panther chameleons, a tree dwelling reptile with minimal barriers between animal and guest. Now that's something you don't see every day. Well, I don't see every day. After a few more glass encased terrariums with snakes, frogs, tortoises, and lizards, is a small reef aquarium. The zoo states it was made to place the marine species of Madagascar, primarily the more endangered ones, as the heart of this project. The idea is to increase awareness of climate change, pollution, and marine trafficking that poses grave threats to coral reefs worldwide. All right, ladies and gents, I've done it. Well, actually, Mark did it. After six years and like four attempts, I can finally give you a proper introduction to the Fusa, or Fouche. Looks like a dog, a mongoose. It has the claws of a cat, but walks flat-footed like a bear. They are related to the mongoose and civets and belong to a family of carnivores only found on Madagascar. At six feet long, tail included, they are the island's largest predator, described as an animal that will eat anything with a heartbeat. Snakes, mice, tenrecs, and just as I was getting you to really like them, 50% of their diet consists of cute and cuddly lemurs. If I didn't imply it already, every time I visit a zoo that has a fusa, I never catch more than a glimpse. So I have to give credit to the French for discovering and mastering the most effective way to get their attention. And now I know what to do next time. You can't hate a fusa for eating a lemur, it's only natural, but I wouldn't really hold it against you if you had those same feelings towards people who eat them. The white belted ruffed lemur, a subspecies of the black and white ruffed lemur, is four feet long and can weigh up to 10 pounds, making them one of the largest lemurs out there. 
However, this large size makes them a greater target for poachers and villagers. Like a lot of animals in Madagascar, they are critically endangered. Ruffed lemurs are very vital to the ecosystem. They've been nicknamed the largest pollinators in the world, capable of separating tough to open leaves so they can reach the flowers inside. As they drink the nectar, the pollen will stick to the lemur's fur and thus gets transported from tree to tree. You've seen the cousin of a mongoose, and two doors down from them, in the lushest, densest enclosure, is a mongoose lemur. I've wondered for years how they got that name, since they have no relation to the mongoose. You'll find a bunch of sources say they do have similar color and body similarities to a mongoose, especially if you look at their elongated pointed snouts that distinguishes them from more round-faced lemurs with shorter snouts. Every display is amazing and modernized in its own way, but it doesn't get more natural in a zoo than a couple of rainforest islands. According to old maps, these were home to gibbons, spider monkeys, capuchins, and now crowned and ring-tailed lemurs. Speaking of being more distinguished from other lemurs, there's nothing more recognizable than them. I believe you will find more ring-tailed lemurs in human care than any other primate while also being on the endangered species list. And there's no confusion around here on how they got their name. Their tail usually has 13 alternating black and white rings. The tail itself, of course, is used for balance when exploring the treetops, but the banded pattern may be used for communication. Apparently they can be used to keep the group together if they were to lift their tails up high in the air so the bright pattern can be more easily visible. We've seen a lot of cool species so far. The collection is a perfect balance of threatened reptiles and primates. Now, it's not a competition, but I'm glad the designers saved the best for last. Red-bellied lemurs are among the few lemurs, or you can say primates in general, that are monogamous, living in small family groups as large as 10 with an adult breeding pair and their offspring, versus ring-tailed lemur groups that can be as large as 30 individuals. The males have the red bellies and white patches around their eyes, while the females have white bellies. And no, unfortunately, I cannot tell you what happened to her. So that leaves us with the positively mysterious looking crowned Shifaka, or Safaka, or Shifak. We featured Shifakas before, but back in the States, chances are you'll only find the Kokoro's Shifaka. What I'm about to say I believe refers to all wildlife, but the zoo's website states it's a Madagascan tradition to believe ancestors are reincarnated as Shifakas, so touching or killing it is taboo. Their critically endangered status says that some people don't believe in such tradition. That's where the Paris Zoo stepped in a little. In 1994, this was the first place ever to successfully breed the crown Shifaka. They help manage the zoo population that also works with this lemur, which right now is 18 individuals in five different parks. On top of that, the French National Museum of Natural History, which owns and operates the zoo, works with biologists and conservationists in Madagascar to help preserve the species in its native habitat. Even though Madagascan wildlife is one of the most represented groups of animals in zoos across the globe, this is one of the few Madagascan attractions I know of that tries to be equally educational as it is diverse and immersive for both you and its residents. We have a pretty famous one in America, but in terms of quality, I'll have to admit it doesn't quite compare to this one at the Paris Zoo. And that, my friends, is where we will leave things for now. So please stay tuned, stay wild, and thank you all for watching Zoo Tours.